About 60 years ago or so, Sittingbourne was visited by some big guns from the world of politics. I was prompted to look at this when I heard that the headmaster at Borden Grammar School had unearthed a famous signature in a visitor's book. I discovered that in the space of four years, Sittingbourne had received visits from some big names in British politics. These are three names that you might have heard of. In 1959, there was to be a general election and politicians everywhere were getting excited. Sittingbourne was visited by the then Prime Minister, Harold Macmillan. This was not the first time that Macmillan had spoken publicly in Sittingbourne. In January 1950, he had spoken to a crowded public meeting at Sittingbourne Town Hall as a Conservative opposition MP. He had won a seat at Bromley a few years earlier. He praised the welfare state, but criticised the post-war Labour government and its policies. By the following year, 1951, the Conservatives had won the general election and Macmillan became the Housing Minister under Winston Churchill. By 1957, Harold Macmillan was Prime Minister. Fast forward, as they say, to 1959. The Conservative candidate for the Faversham constituency, of which Sittingbourne is a part, was Mrs Elsie S Olson, and she was campaigning hard, speaking at Tunstall, Bredger and Borden on Friday the 2nd of October. The following day, the Saturday, she was joined by the Right Honourable Harold Macmillan, the Prime Minister, no less. The appearance was for five o'clock on the Saturday afternoon, in Sittingbourne's car park, here in Central Avenue, outside Revenue House. In the photograph, Elsie Owen stands beside him on the back of a lorry as he speaks into microphones, and the view is down Central Avenue, with Burton's just visible in the high street, and the spire of the Congregational Church looming behind the mic stand. The Town Hall, with its distinctive clock tower, is on the right of the picture, facing the high street where the Nat West Bank now stands, with Scott's the dry cleaners on the corner. The crowd was estimated at about 3,000, but they were not by any means all supporters. Some said this was the stormiest of Mr Macmillan's whole tour. It certainly sounds like a lively meeting. It took him 20 minutes to deliver an address timed at 10 minutes. A young woman pushed herself in front of him and shouted, Shame on you, Macmillan, for shaking hands with the murderer Macarius. This is a reference to Archbishop Macarius of Cyprus, which was still a British colony until 1960. A great deal of heckling came from the League of Empire Loyalists, who had apparently tried to disrupt his meetings all the way down from London. The most prominent was a young man with a fierce red beard and moustache, who continually shouted at the top of his voice from a position of vantage almost underneath the lorry. Murderer! You're turning Britain into a Yankee satellite! Do you trust the Russians? Meanwhile, a bugle at the back of the crowd sounded the retreat several times, and opposition loudspeakers added to the confusion. Mr Macmillan kept his temper longer than his wife, Lady Dorothy, who often shouted at the bearded man. The Prime Minister eventually drew roars of applause and laughter when he turned on his tormentor and said, Let me speak, I make better speeches than you do interruptions. And, Why don't you cut your beard off? You would hear better. And he scored a great victory at the end when he thanked the audience for listening patiently. He shook Mrs Olson's hand as she called for three cheers and the swarming masses responded nobly. The newspaper report says little of what he spoke about. He looked tired as he signed a few autographs and left for his return journey by car to Downing Street. At the general election, Elsie Owen failed to win the seat, losing by a tiny margin to the standing Labour candidate Percy Wells, although the Conservative government increased their majority in Parliament. By 1963, the Conservatives were still in power and it was the turn of the Right Honourable Margaret Thatcher, MP for Finchley, who was in Sittingbourne on February the 14th. She came to speak to the Conservative Women's Luncheon at the Masonic Hall here in Albany Road. 
She had been elected an MP in 1959 and although only 37 years old, was now Parliamentary Under Secretary for the Ministry of Pensions in the Macmillan Government. She spoke in praise of the government but decried the fact that Britain had failed to join the European Common Market. She also spoke about the current unemployment problem. She was thanked by the local Conservative candidate, Mrs Elsie Owen. In September of that same year, the new leader of the opposition, Harold Wilson, came to speak publicly at Borden Grammar School. The Faversham constituency was a marginal constituency and the country was expecting a general election at some point, with the Conservative government troubled by scandal. Mr Wilson arrived by train and was taken to the local Labour Party headquarters here in Park Road, where no doubt he was offered a cup of tea and something to eat. He's shown looking at a display of newspaper reports. It was of course just a short walk to the school in Remembrance Avenue, where Mr Wilson spoke to a packed audience of 500 people, supported by Labour's prospective candidate Terry Boston. He spoke about the soaring land and property prices in the South East and said that the Labour Party was ready to take on the Macmillan government whenever an election was called. But he made no mention of the soon to be completed Denning report into the Profumo affair. He signed the visitors book at Borden Grammar School and if he hadn't perhaps I wouldn't be making this video. That year the government and the establishment had been rocked by various events, not the least of which was the Profumo affair. When the general election did come, in 1964, the Labour Party won by a landslide and Harold Wilson became Prime Minister. All this, and the rest, as they say, is history. If you have found this video interesting, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit our website.